Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Alan Ladd and Evelyn Keyes in Whistle Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you tonight a screenplay only recently released that has broken box office records for its studio from coast to coast and continues to sweep the country with acclaim. It is Seymour Nebenzow's dramatic screen hit, Whistle Stop, based on the best-selling novel of the same name. And our stars are Alan Ladd in the two-fisted type of role that made him famous, and the talented and lovely Evelyn Keyes. As perhaps you know, Whistle Stop denotes a lonely wayside station where express trains stop on signal only. And a new arrival may mean anything from a visiting relative to romance and adventure. <clears throat> Speaking of those wayside towns and villages and the people who inhabit them, I can't help wondering how many are members of our weekly audience. For as you know, this theater of yours is the biggest theater in the world. From coast to coast, from city flat to lonely whistle-stop stations, it embraces an audience of many, many millions, whose only admission is their loyalty to Lux Flakes. And from the countless letters we receive, that loyalty is well rewarded. Especially in this time of shortages, Lux Flakes are doing their part in helping preserve those often scarce and precious fabrics. To the sound of clicking rails and rumbling wheels, our curtain rises on Act One of Whistle Stop, starring Alan Ladd as Kenny Beach and Evelyn Keyes as Mary, with Edwin Max as Gitlo. An event has just taken place in an obscure Michigan village. The express train out of Chicago has ground to an impatient stop at the tiny depot and discharged a passenger. In the uncertain light of dawn, she walks down the dirt road, her expensive shoes flicking up a little whip line of dust. Half a mile down the road, she reaches an old frame house, hesitates for a second, then opens the front door and walks to the kitchen. Hello, Molly. Mary. Well, Mary, for heaven's sake. Surprised to see me, Molly? When on earth did you get back? Just now. I saw your husband, Sam, at the whistle stop, but he was down the track talking to the engineer. I don't think he recognized me. Mary, you look like a million. Say, is that coat real mink? It better be. Well, sit down. I'll fix you some breakfast. Just coffee, Molly, thanks. <laughs> Just like my Kenny. Never eats anything in the morning. Um, what brings you back from Chicago, Mary? I came back to sell the house. We uh, owe you some rent, don't we? Oh, forget it. Did you lose your job? I gave it up. I, uh, I figured I needed a rest. Molly, can I stay here a couple of days? Why, I'll have Kenny moved out of your old room in the jiffy. Oh, don't wake him up. Well, he, uh, he's not here right now. Kenny hasn't left town. Oh, no. He's always up to Ashbury looking around. You know Kenny. He hasn't changed any, huh? He's about the same, Mary. And the rest of the family? Oh, fine, fine. Pop, well, you saw him, still working at the depot. And Josie... Is Josie married yet? Oh, no, not yet, but soon, I bet. Oh. Ernie's got a good job now. But Kenny, Kenny's still the same. One of these days, something's going to happen for Kenny, too. Why, I'll bet he's working on some big deal right now. <laughs> oh, big deal. How much do you want to bet, Molly? All right, come on, Barker, come on. How much do you want to bet? Um, uh, I'll raise it a dime, Kenny. What do you say, Gitlow? I call. Sounds like the train from Chicago. Expecting somebody, Kenny? Kenny ain't expecting nobody. What are you holding, Gitlow? Queens. Oh, that's too bad I got kings. Queens and three deuces. <laughs> Not doing so good, are you, Kenny? With cards or anything else? Meaning what? Oh, nothing much. 
So Blue Lynch got a letter from an old friend of yours. No one cares, Barker. Last time I was in Chicago, Lou had me look her up. She was doing all right. Shut up. Who would ever think our little Mary would wind up wearing me? What's the idea of slugging them, Kenny? Maybe now you'll learn to keep that big trap of his shut. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I will, Kenny. He's seeing you, Kitlow. Kenny. Yeah? Forget that Mary dame. She's no good for you, Kenny. You want me to tie one on you, too? <laughs> That's what I like about you, Kenny. Nerve. You got nerve, yeah. Plenty of nerve. Get low. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Lou. It's the best you can do. Playing Penny Ant in the barbershop. Well, Harry says it's okay, Lou. He lets us play here all the time. He don't open till eight o'clock. It's his barbershop. He only rents it from me. I only own the hotel. What's the matter, Lou? Something bothering you? Get low. You left the bar in the mess. Go clean it up. Well, I'm a bartender, not a busboy. I say clean it up. Okay. See you tonight, Kenny. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Go on, clean up your bar. Coming home at ten minutes to seven in the morning. You gotta stop this staying out all night. You know what, Ma? You're getting fat. Oh, don't stop it, Kenny. Now stop tickling me. <laughs> okay, how about some coffee? <laughs> Kenny, guess what? Oh, I'm no good at guessing anymore. Mary's back. Mr. Gag. She's upstairs right this minute, Kenny. Kenny, ain't you even going to eat your breakfast first? Kenny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Kenny. How are you, beautiful? How are you, handsome? I've missed you. It's been a long time. Aren't you... Aren't you going to kiss me? What do you think of... Where'd you get this? This coat? I bought it. May cost a lot of dough. You bet it does. I got it wholesale, Kenny. A friend of mine saved me a lot of money. Yeah, what friend? He owns a department store. We almost got married. And this, a gold cigarette case. To lovely Mary from George. Did that come with a coat? No, it didn't. It was a birthday present. Any objections? Yeah, plenty. What'd you come back here for? Maybe I came back for you, Kenny. You sure it wasn't for somebody else you wrote to Lou Lance. I answered his letter. That's more than I got from you. You never got anything from me. Go ahead and say it. I never asked for anything from anybody. This, uh, this room of yours, Kenny, it's decorated very attractively. Two, three, four photographs. Four different girls. May I read what they've written on their pictures? I cut it out. Oh, this girl's very pretty. Fran. To Kenny with all my love, Fran. What a couple of characters, you and me. Don't see each other for two years and right off we start battling. Still, it looks as if you've been pretty busy since I've been gone. Yeah, and I'm going to be kept busy. Are you? You know, uh, when we started this conversation, I was going to kiss you. It's also a good way to end conversations, Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hi, Hi, folks. Oh, still putting it away, huh? Oh, Ernie. Come on in, honey. Hi, Sam, Molly. You remember Mary, don't you, Ernie? Well, sure. Good to see you, Mary. Say, it's good to see one fellow in this town who's getting ahead. See, Ernie, that needle's just as sharp as ever. You always got to take everything anybody says is so personal. Sit down, Ernie. Hunk apple pie? Couldn't eat another bite. Oh, well, a little piece, maybe. (laughs) Oh, what an appetite I'm marrying. (laughs) I mean... Now who? Mary in there? Yes, I'm here. Who? Oh. Hiya, Mary. Uh, these uh, flowers here, uh, they're from Lou Lynch. Well, I leave. Uh, just set them down. Sure. They're nice, huh? Oh. Hiya, Kenny. So, so long. Wow. Red roses, Mary. Oh, boy. Wasn't that that Barker fellow, Kenny? Yeah. Oh, uh, Kenny, I've been figuring on putting up some of those wild strawberries. How about getting me some in the morning? Oh, let Josie do it. Mm, What'll you be doing that's so important? That's no way to talk, Josie. Oh, no one ever says anything about him doing a single lick of work. Oh, no, no. He can go to Ashbury every single night and spend the money you give him drinking and chasing around. He's right. You've got to quit that monkey business, Kenny. What do you expect him to do? Sit around and wait for a job to come to him? Oh, sure. The best time to start looking for a job is at night. And the best place for looking is every pool room on Main Street of the bar Lou Lentz's hotel. That's telling him. Having a good time, Mary? <laughs> Same old happy household. Oh, come on, Ernie. Let's go. Oh, sure, Josie. Hey, Ernie, if you're going to town, you can give me a lift. Okay, Kenny. Sure. Well, Kenny, I, 
I thought you said you were staying home tonight. Oh, I, uh, I forgot I got a date. Well, what about me? I think I'll go along too, Ernie. I just said I had a date. I heard what you said. Okay, Ernie? Why, why sure, Mary. Why not? Oh, thanks, Ernie. I guess I'll get out here. I told you so, Ernie. Ashbury Hotel, Flamingo Room, Cocktails. Take it easy, Josie. Oh, I may as well get out, too. Have a good time, Josie. Oh, you too, Mary. See you in the morning. So long, Mary. Where are you going, Kenny? Not where you're going. You could be mistaken. So long. Hello, Lou. Mary. Thanks for the roses. Very thoughtful. Mary, let me look at you. Well, how do I look after two years away from this teeming metropolis? If I told you the truth, you'd only say I was trying to pour it on. Well, you've really gone to town on your office, haven't you? <laughs> Had it done over, and I fixed up a little apartment right in there. I like it. Convenient, too. Right over the flamingo room. It's a little noisy at times. Still, it's better than those hotel rooms down the hall. <laughs> I own the joint. I know how bad they are. I... Well? Your hair, Mary. The way your hair shines in the light. You know, it's a pity you don't wear a ribbon anymore. That's what impressed me the first time I saw you. You too, Lou. Me too what? You haven't changed a bit in two years either. Have you? Well, I came back. Still can't get him out of your blood, can you? I wanted to see what he was like again. I could have told you two years ago. It wouldn't have helped two years ago. That no good heel. The arrogant way he walks around like he owns this town. Come here. Hmm? What? Look through this window. There's the bar down there. Well, you can see what's going on all the time. You see him? Mr. Kenny Veach. He knows the way I feel about him. Who's that girl with him, Lou? That's Fran Summers. That girl comes from a fine family. What's she doing hanging around with a bum like that? She's a woman, isn't she? You need any further explanation? No. No, I guess I don't. Well, what do you say we go down? Sure, Lou, why not? Well, what's the matter, Fran? Aren't you glad to see me? I thought we had a date for last night, Kenny. Watch it, Kenny. Lou's coming. Yeah, so what? Uh, come on, get low. Fran and I'll have a drink. Okay, Kenny. Hello, get low. Hello? You can talk better than that, huh? Oh, uh, hello, Mary. Good evening, Miss Summers. Oh, hello, Mr. Lentz. How's the family? Fine, thanks. That's swell. Get low, give me 50 out of the cash register. Okay. You mean we're going out, Lou? Well, not if you'd rather we... Oh, no, no, we may as well go. Good night, Get low. Good night, Kenny. Good night, Mary. So she's back. I said she's back. What do you have to keep looking at her for? They've gone out the door. Kenny... Can't you look at me? Sorry, I'm just thinking. What are you thinking? What? I know what he's thinking, Miss Summers. Maybe you know too much, Gitlow. I know what, because Kenny and me, we're a lot alike, you see, Miss Summers. Kenny and me, we both got nerve. Then you tell me, Gitlow. What does that mean, that, that look in his eyes? I, I get scared when you look like that, Kenny. He's just thinking back two years, that's all. Ain't that right, Kenny? They was right where you're standing, Miss Summers, the two of them. She and oh, Kenny... Oh, never mind. And... I don't want to know. Oh, it's okay. Kenny here don't care nothing about Mary no more, do you, Kenny? Well, anyway, two years ago, that dame's got a being up on it, see? She's all for getting out of town. She wants to go to Chicago. Oh, listen to me, Kenny. There's nothing for us here. Chicago's a big city. We can make out there. What'll I do in Chicago? Well, what are you doing here? Playing cards all the time. This town, your friends, they're no good for you, Kenny. At least you'll have a chance there. Something will turn up. Too many Lou Lenses there. Did uh, somebody mention me? This is a private party. I just thought I could do something for you, Sonny. Yeah. Yeah, you can give me a cigarette. Sure. Anything else? You can light it. Now that you've got all you want, you'd better go. I don't want you hanging around here. He said that with a smile. It'd sound better. Come on, let's go, Mary. Lou, you asked me for a date tonight. I sure did. The offer still holds? Certainly, if you're ready now. Take your hands off her. I'll make up your mind now. You're going with him or with me. Her mind's made up. Now beat it. 
I said take your hands off her. Why, you two-bit four-flusher, I'm... Kenny! Kenny, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Right on the button, Kenny boy, that's it. I'm through, Kenny. I'm through wasting my life trying to change you. I'm leaving this town, and I'm leaving for good. Oh, Kenny, you were swell. Mary! Kenny, stop! Stop! Why, Mr. Lynch, throwing bottles at a good customer like me. Get out. Look what you did to your nice big mirror. Get out. Sure. Sure, I'll get out. Next time when I say hands off, you'll know what I mean. Kenny. Oh, Kenny, what's the matter? Snap out of it. Hmm? No, I'm sorry. I was just remembering something. You see, Miss Summers, he was just remembering something. Let's get out of here, Kenny. Let's drive out to Fiddler's Place, just the two of us. Oh, sure, friend. Just you and me. You say those things like you mean it. And all the time you're laughing inside yourself. Laughing and sneering at me and her and the whole world. Laughing? Him? Oh, I never once heard Kenny laugh. Never once. Oh, you're bad, Kenny. There's something terribly bad about you. I don't know what it is, but it's cruel and hard and... That's funny, Fran. I, I always thought I was a sweet kid. You're full of hate and jealousy. And no matter how I've tried, how she's tried... Take it easy, Fran. I'm sorry. That was a terrible thing I said. No, it was honest. There's nothing terrible about being honest. You still want to go to Fiddler's? Yes. Well, let's go then, honey. I'm feeling swell tonight. And your million laughs. Kenny. Hello, Pop. What are you doing here in the depot? Thought you went to town. I've uh, been to town. Oh, listen to that rooster. Keeps it up all night long. Oh, my back's killing me. I can't hardly move. Go on home, Pop. I'll take over. Uh, three hours yet. Go on home. Oh, thanks, son. Thanks a lot. You'll find a sandwich over there and some hot coffee. I'll handle everything, Pop. I wouldn't ask you if it wasn't from my back. Uh, thanks a lot, Kenny. Hiya, Kenny. Oh, come in, Gitlin. I just met the old gentleman. Said you was taking over for him. How about a game of casino? No, I don't feel like it. Oh, come on. A couple of hands. I can never sleep before daylight. You know something? I like it in here. Why? You know, trains passing by, cars full of people, and, and yet in here you're always alone. It makes me feel safe. You like feeling safe? Well, he, you know what I mean. Working in that nightclub for lunch, he's always around. He's always watching me. Oh, I tell you, dealing just four cars. Huh? Oh, yeah. You see, Kenny, one time I was in a bad jam. The police don't know about it, but Lou does. He never says nothing, but I know he's waiting. Just waiting for me to make one wrong move. Lou's a mean guy, Kenny. You gonna take those seven? Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. I sure was surprised to see Mary. Only I figured she was coming back to you. Yeah. To, of course, after Chicago, it'd be kind of hard on her to come down to your way of living. Especially when a guy like Lou Lentz is nuts about her. Did you see him take that 50 bucks? Why, he'll spend that like we'd spend 50 cents. You know what I mean? It's a big impression on a girl. Do you play that deuce, Kenny? Hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll be. Yeah, if it wasn't for Lou, I'd be happy. It'd be better for you, too, Kenny. <laughs> the cards are sticky, ain't they? I'll have to get a new deck. Forget the cards. What's on your mind, Kenny? The Ashbury Annual Fair. That's what's on my mind. You're nuts? Kenny, the fair is June the 1st. See, that's two weeks from today. What's that got to do with us? That's a big day for Lou. He owns the concessions. He makes a fortune. Last year, he cleaned up over $15,000 in one day. How do you know? I know because I drove him to the train after the fair closed. He takes the dough to a bank in Detroit. He'll do the same thing this year. He told me so. And that train he takes, it's got to be flagged for him right here. Keep talking, Gidlo. Well, what if the guy sitting here in the depot that night forgot to flag the train? 
Lou wouldn't get to Detroit, would he? Oh, it could be done easy. All I got to do is drive Lou here. Your, your, your old man's back is bothering him again, see? And you're working here just like tonight. All it takes is nerve, Kenny. And that's what we got. You and me. Nerve. I know a good place to get rid of him. And as far as anybody knows, Lou never comes back from Detroit. What do you say, Kenny? The Detroit train's always on time, get me. You could set your watch fire. Kenny. I wouldn't be surprised if he had an idea there. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Our curtain rises on Act Two of Whistle Stop, starring Alan Ladd as Kenny and Evelyn Keyes as Mary. Drugged by the dry rot of squandered years and tortured by his love for Mary, Kenny, bitter and sullen, awaits the night of the Ashbury Annual Fair. He's convinced himself that he'll never find happiness with Lou Lentz alive. And as the days pass, Gitlow's plan seems more simple and easy than ever. All it takes is nerve, Kenny. And that's what we got. You and me. Nerve. What do you say, Kenny? What do you say? What do you say? It's early evening. Kenny's walked aimlessly down to the river in back of the house. Turning suddenly, he sees Mary just a few steps behind him. Hi, you beautiful. Hi, you handsome. Hey, what are you doing home tonight? Lou had to drive to Mayfield. Lou had to drive to Mayfield. Got a cigarette? Here. Yeah. What happened to the gold case? Lovely Mary from George. Uh, what happened to George? I put him back in my suitcase. Oh, that's a good place for him. Ken, you're seeing a lot of Gitlow, aren't you? Now and then, he's a good guy, buys me drinks. Once Gitlow got in a lot of trouble, he wouldn't be around today if it hadn't been for Lou. Maybe he's got something on Lou. Did you ever think of that? What about Barker, the guy who brought the roses? Lou don't keep him around for laughs either. He's afraid of Barker. Barker knows too much. Ken, go easy with Getlow, will you? Are you telling me this, or is it a message from Lentz? I'm telling you. Oh, Mary, why do you keep seeing him? What about me, Mary? What about us? Us, Ken. Haven't I tried? Haven't I done everything I knew to make something out of you? Do you think I'd be here now if I didn't still... What were you going to say? You didn't what? You didn't still love me. Oh, it's no use, Kenny. I'd do anything in the world for you, Mary, anything. Let go of me, Ken. Let go, I... You think you can get anything you want that way, don't you? You're strong. You're tough. What you want, you just grab. There's some things a guy just won't give up without a fight. You're wrong, Kenny. You've got the wrong slant on everything. You're hurting everyone. Your father, your mother, your sister, me. You're so wrong. You've always said that. No matter what I do or how I feel, I'm always wrong. Where are you going? I don't know. I think maybe I'll drop in a fiddler's place. Want to come along? No, thanks. Will Brian be there? I haven't any idea. Maybe. It's Gitlow's night off. He likes fiddler's place, too, doesn't he? They got good beer there. Good night, Kenny. Good night, beautiful. Why don't you walk down to the river? It's a great place for thinking things out. I, I've tried it. Kenny. Yes, sir. Kenny, boy, the town's all set for the big fair. Only two more days and bigger than ever. This fair's going to make somebody a rich guy. Uh, this beer is wonderful. You sure you don't want some? I don't want anything. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Miss Summers. Here, here, sit down and take good care of my boy, will you? He's got a lot on his mind. I drove out here alone, Kenny. I I took a chance I'd find you. You like attention, huh? I'd like a little more from you. But lately you do seem to have a lot on your mind. A lot of Mary. What about Mary? Kenny, the whole town's laughing at you. You trying to compete with Lou Lentz. What if you quit beating yourself down? Everybody knows me so well. Everybody knows all about me. No one better than I, Kenny. I happen to love you. You don't know what it means to really be in love. No. No, of course not. Get low. Yeah, Kenny boy. 
Watch out for Fran, will you? I'm getting out of here. Huh? Well, sure, Jenny, sure. Is that you, Molly? Come in. It's me. Oh. You weren't gone long. I had a hunch I should come home. I guess I was right. You're packing. You're leaving us. That's right. Don't go, man. I'm moving into Ashbury. Wait a little while longer. That's all I'm asking. Oh, let's stop kidding each other. The sooner I leave, the better. Will it be better? What have I got with you? I cried tonight, Kenny, after you left. For the first time in two years, I cried. What have you got with me? You get what you give. When I needed you most, you walked out on me. Now you're walking out again. I've never promised you anything before, but I'm making a promise now. Wait, and we'll go together. Go where? Anywhere. It's a long walk to anywhere. This time, we'll ride. Ah, uh, this sure is a wonderful fair, get low. I never had such a good time at the fair in my whole life. How about another little nip, Hop, huh? Oh, thanks, Kelo, thanks. Wonderful liquor, just wonderful. Yeah, I bought it special for you. Best medicine in the world for that back of yours. Oh, yeah, my back. Yeah, come up, Pop, drink up, drink up. I'm going to work tonight, Kelo. I'm going to be at the whistle stop. Oh, hello, Josie, oh, honey. Oh, just look at you, huh? Oh, you're drunk. Oh, Josie. Now, Ernie will have to take over the whistle stop. You've ruined our whole evening. Oh, Ham Beach. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Where'd you get money for a bottle of booze? Wait a minute. Sure, doesn't it get low? Get low's my friend. Why, I didn't know you had to work tonight. Oh, you didn't know. I'm awful sorry. Why, I wouldn't have done anything like Go on, beat it. Now, don't you worry, Josie, honey. You and Ernie go and have a good time. Now, what about the whistle stop? Kenny will take over. Oh. Sure he will, sure he will. Lassie, you, you big loafer. You're going right home now and sleep it off. Oh, Molly, you're so good to me. Mary. Hello, Molly. <laughs> Why, Pa? You seen Kenny, Mary? Right here, Ma. Oh, now, take it easy. I'll take over the whistle stop. Thanks, Kenny boy. I'll be back as soon as I get him headed for home. Molly, not so fast. I'm a sick man, honey. Kenny, why would Gitlo do a thing like that? Buy Pop all those drinks? Because he's a good guy and he likes Pop. So you're going down to the depot, huh? Yeah, I'll have to. It couldn't be helped. Couldn't it? Somebody's got to take over. Naturally, it would be you. Hey, they're starting a square dance. I haven't seen a square dance in ages. Come on, Kenny, let's walk. Go ahead. I'll be there in a minute. All right, Fran, what's the idea? Idea of what, Kenny? You've been following me. What do you want? I've got the car, Kenny, and I want to talk to you. Couldn't we drive out somewhere in the country and... Oh, will you grow up, Fran? Well, you haven't got a date. She didn't come with you. She's Lou's girl. Let me alone, will you? Now, go on. Get lost. All right, Kenny. I'll go. When Mary tells you the same thing, don't come crawling back to me. Because I hate you. I hate you. Oh, Fran, wait a minute. I'm sorry I... All right, then go. Come in. Uh, hello, Lou. Uh, Buck, uh, he, uh, he says to tell you they're closing things up now. Uh, uh, I guess the fair's about over. Yeah, yeah, we mustn't keep these good people up too late. <laughs> Say, will you look at that bag full of dough? Now sit down, Wait, you, You'd better hurry, boss. You, you don't want to miss your train. But you're right. <laughs> I... Just thought it'd be safer if you waited at the whistle stop. Maybe you're right. Okay, let's go. Where's your car? That's funny. It's here a couple of minutes ago. You're leaving now, boss? That's right, Barking. If you're looking for your car, she took it. Mary. Mary? Yeah, the keys was in it. She just drove off. Being it was her, I didn't say. It's okay, okay. Come on, Gitlow. We'll take the station wagon. Say, uh, you hear about the accident, Lou? What accident? That uh, Fran Summers dame tried to drive a car through a stone wall. Kill her? I don't know. Cops took her to the hospital. It's funny, uh, they say it looked like she almost done it on purpose. Strange people in this world, Barker. Yeah, that's the same. What a nice kid. Come on, Gitlow. Just be careful how you drive. <laughs> well, hello. You don't think I'd want to get you killed, do you? Like I said, the strange people in this world. <laughs> I have to leave the fair. I could have walked. Molly's worried you won't be at the whistle stop in time. Oh, I got plenty of time. What's the matter? Don't you want me to drive you? It gave you that idea. 
Well, for somebody who has plenty of time, you certainly left in an awful hurry. Want me to drive? No, no, I'll stay where I am. Okay, then let's go. What are you so jumpy about? Nothing, I said just let's go. Train's late, Lou. You you want to wait in the deep? You can off. Got a match? Huh? Uh, yeah. What are you shaking for? Thanks. Well, if we're going in the deep, I'll open the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello, Mr. Lynn. Oh, hello, Ernie. Ernie? What are you doing here? Where's... What am I doing here? That's a fine question for you to ask, doing what you did to Sam Veach. What? What? Where's Kenny? Oh, it's just what I expected. The father's drunk and the son's probably getting drunk. You'd better flag the train, Ernie. A fine night this turned out to be. I'll be back in the afternoon, Gitlo. Be here. Sure, sure. Have a good trip. What are you waiting for? Go on home. I thought Kenny'd be here. I keep him company sometimes. We play a little card. Here she comes, Mr. Lance. You better get out here. Okay. Maybe it's just as well he didn't show up. This just wasn't your lucky night, Will you hurry up? Can you hear the train whistle? I'm supposed to be at the depot. It won't matter if you're two minutes late. Yeah, why won't it? Because Molly sent Ernie down anyway, just in case you were late. Stop the car. All right, Kenny. What's the matter with you tonight? Nothing. You can get out now if you want to. I ask you a question. I'll ask you one. What's going on between you and Gitlow? You seem to have figured it out for yourself. I'm hoping I was wrong. Kenny. Kenny, look at me. You wouldn't have... You wouldn't have done anything like that to... Get low and I, we... We had a little something cooked up. I... I wanted to be there so as I could tell Gitlow it was all off. I... was backing out. Kenny. Oh, my poor darling. I wish I... Mary. Don't cry. Please don't cry. Put your arms around me, Kenny. Hold me, Kenny. Mary. We can go away now, can't we? Sure we can. Listen, there's a train. It's... Kenny, your pocket. What's that in your pocket? My pocket? Take it out. It's a gun. Get those guns. This time we'll ride. I see what you meant, Kenny. Oh, now, wait a minute. Everything you told me, just another lie, wasn't it? I never lied to you. You must have slipped in my pocket. Mary, I swear I didn't you come here to... came here to kill a man. But it's too late now. He's safe. He's on that train. And I wish I were on it, too. All right, what's stopping you? There's one tomorrow night. But you won't be on it because he's coming back. All right, easy boys. Get out of my life. Take him and get out of my life. A week has gone by. Mary has moved into Ashbury. And now that Lou Lentz is back, has been seen with him constantly. But life is a little brighter in the Beach household, at least for some members of the family. For Josie and Ernie are going to be married in three days. Do you think I should invite Lou Lentz to the wedding, Ma? Just because Mary's coming. No reason why he has to tag along. Hmm. She doesn't go anywhere without him since the fair. Uh, quiet, Josie. Kenny's coming. Oh, okay. Come on in, Kenny. Got your supper waiting for you. Thanks, sweetheart. Well, how's the happy bride? Fine. Kenny, I went to the hospital today. I saw Fran. Any better? Doctor says she can't pull through. That's awful. She wants to see you, Kenny. All right. All right. Oh, you're going to be nice to her, aren't you? Well, you didn't think I was going to go and fight with her, did you? I don't know what to expect from you anymore. Skip it, will you, Josie? There isn't anything Fran wouldn't have done for you, and you know it. Oh, why don't you stop? Oh, you will see her, won't you? I'll go tonight if it'll make you any happier. So I meet my dinner, and I'll go see her tonight. Oh, thanks. Can I, uh, can I go in now, nurse? Yes, but you mustn't stay long. She's very weak. Thanks. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Fran. I was afraid you weren't coming. I never would have had the nerve to ask you 
If Josie hadn't told me. So, Josie told you? Oh, don't be angry with her, Kenny. Josie told me everything you said to her about how you really felt about me. I'm so happy. Oh, uh, oh, I see. I know I won't pull through, but I'm not scared anymore. Oh, I am happy, Kenny, because I've got you, haven't I? And having you care about me, I'll still be living all the while you are. Come on now, snap out of it. Why, you'll be out of here in a couple of weeks and we'll... We'll... Don't take it so hard, Kenny. It, it'll work out all right. Kenny, look at me. Look at me. I should have known Josie was lying. She did it because she thought it would make me feel better. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, too, friend. I, I wish it could have been different. I'm sorry for everything. Look at yourself. You're all broken up. I never thought a woman could do this to you. How does it feel, Kenny? How does it feel to love someone who doesn't give a darn about you? It hurts, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Kenny? Oh, friend, I'll take it easy, will you? All the while I loved you, I used to be scared to death. And now I can see you're nothing to be afraid of. Nothing good will ever happen to you because you're no good. Now get out of here. Go on to some bar room and fill yourself on rotten whiskey. Go on, get out. Get out, get out. Sure. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll get out for <laughs> And uh, Josie wants you to come to a wedding, get low, sir. Yeah. Said she wouldn't get married without her old pal, Kippo. Well, thanks, Kenny. That's swell. Yeah. You know where I've been tonight? I've, I've been to the hospital to see Fran. She, she told me to get out of the room. Kenny, what's the matter with you? I waited in the hall. I, I waited I don't know how long. I wanted to go back to see her. They wouldn't let me. And I saw them wheel her out. She was dead, Kittle. Fran was dead. How about a drink to Fran? Sure, Kenny, sure. That poor kid. Uh, you better take one with me because... Because you're going to need it. Uh, Kittle, I'm... I'm going to go to work. Yeah. I uh, stopped off and saw the boss who's starting on the railroad Monday laying track. Oh, that's... Fine, Kenny, fine. Well, uh, don't spread it around. Everybody in town will keel over. Well, look who's here. Kenny, no. Hello, Kenny. Oh, uh, champagne and everything. What are we celebrating? This is a private party, remember? Tonight I'm buying. What'll you have? More champagne? Put your money away and get out. Everybody tells me to get out tonight. Look at it, Lou. Money. The good old green cabbage buys everything, doesn't it? Kenny. You must be plenty drunk to walk in here again. Sure, I'm drunk, but not on liquor. I'm drunk with everything that's happened in this godforsaken town. You know, Mary, I don't think Lou likes me. I'm filled up to here. All right, you've been begging for this. <laughs> Mister, I'm going to tear you apart for that. Kenny, no. Please, Kenny, please go home. Get him out of here. Get low. Don't touch oh, him. He's okay. Just take it easy, Kenny. Be a good boy now and go on home. Sure. Sure, I'll go home. I don't believe he's drunk or that. I know he isn't. Sit down. Let's finish our drink. You'll have to drink alone, Lou. I'm leaving. Kenny. Kenny, wait for me, please. I'm okay. Go on back. I want to go back with you, Kenny. Back home. Well, Mary, what's the use? I, I can't do anything for you. I don't care. I've wasted all these years boozing and loafing and gambling. I, I've hurt everyone. I've wanted to hurt them. I wanted everyone to feel as rotten as I felt. But I can change, Mary, and I will. Maybe after a no, while. No, not after a while. I love you, Kenny. I love you now, and we're going home. Okay, beautiful. Thanks, handsome. You wanted to see me, Lou? Uh, sit down, Gitlow. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I've gambled all my life. I've lost and I've won. And one thing I hate is a sore loser. I want to be friends with everyone, even your pal Kenny. Still have no use for him, but now that he's working and all set, and on account of Mary, too, well, I say why not live in peace? You really mean that, Lou? I never made a buck holding a grudge. Oh, that's swell. Why, Kenny will be tickled to death to shake hands with you. Uh, maybe sometime tomorrow. Huh? Yeah, tomorrow will be fine. Oh, uh, uh, tomorrow. Kenny's sister's getting married tomorrow, Lou. Maybe he could spare a minute before the wedding. Sure. Sure, and thanks a lot. And, and like I said, Kenny, we had a long talk, and he wants that you should be friends. Lou and me, huh? Yeah. That's one for the book. Oh, no, no kidding. It's a good idea for all of us, and Mary, she'd like it, too. Well, I still don't get it. Hey, you're not stopping now. Hey, he's waiting for us upstairs. We can use this door, Kenny. I, I got it. But Josie's wedding was supposed to be at the church. It won't take a minute. All you got to do is shake hands. Okay, get low, but only one shake. Hey, Lou. Hello. We're here, Kenny and me. See? Nobody's home. Come on, let's uh, go. Oh, uh, maybe he's taking a nap or something. Let's look in here. <laughs> Kenny. Kenny. On the floor. Parker. Parker. He, he's dead, Kenny. And look. This gun. That's your gun. How did it get here? I'll give you three guesses. Well, we got to get out of here. What for? Are you crazy? This is a frame. Sirens. Lou's done this job and he's putting it on us. Wherever he is, he saw us coming here and then he phoned for the cops. We got to lay him out of here, Kenny. Come on. How do you feel now, Kenny? How's the arm? I'm okay. Good thing them cops ain't better shots. They might have killed you. Well, we got away from them. Now what? Well, I think we were smart to hold up here in the woods like we did. It's good and dark now. We can get going again. Not in the car. They'll be looking for us on every road out of here. <laughs> we got to move, Kenny. Oh, what's the news? How do we know what those told cops? With some Kenny, we've got to get out. Train's coming. It's a freight. Take some water somewhere around here. You think you could make it? I've got to make it. The train. You got any idea where it's going? Detroit. Detroit? I got a friend there. She's got a roadhouse just outside of town. Once we get there, we'll get that arm fixed up fine. Come on, Kenny. Come on. Hello, Estelle. Get low. Well, I'll be darned. You, you all alone? And who'd be hanging around a roadhouse at six in the morning? Oh, I'm sure glad to see you, Estelle. I'm in a little trouble. Yeah, I might have known. Yeah, a friend of mine, I left him outside. He's kind of sick, Estelle. I'd like to bring him in. I don't want any trouble around here. He's with me, Andy. Yeah, that's just what I mean. Oh, all right, bring him in. There's a room upstairs with a cot. Get him up there to bed. Get low. Get low, where am I? Yeah, yeah Kenny. You, you, you're all right, Kenny. There's a doctor coming. Oh. Well, I've been sleeping. Well, kind of. I guess you've been unconscious, Kenny. You must have been unconscious when I let you pull this, Gitlow. Huh? You were pretty smart getting me to run away, weren't you? Well, but I'm going to fix you, Gitlow. And then Lou lets. Kenny, what did I do? What did you do? How much did Lou pay you to get rid of me? Well, you, you, you don't think I was in on this, do you? I don't think I know. And if I had the strength right now... Yeah. Kenny, take it easy. Kenny! Hey, what's the matter in there? Well, he got a little excited, that's all. I guess he kind of passed out again. Yeah. Mary. I didn't do it, Mary. I... I couldn't. I didn't shoot him. Honest. Honest. Night. Where have you been? Police station, Molly. What's happened to Kenny, Mary? You've got to tell me. He's in trouble. The worst yet. Well, what did the police want? Where is he? Is he hurt? Kenny hasn't done anything. But he must have got panicky. 
He's run away, and that's almost as bad. Bad? As bad as what? There was a murder this afternoon, Molly. And a lot of Lou Lent's money is missing. Kenny wouldn't do such a thing. He wouldn't. The police know that. They know it now, at least. They told me it would be so easy to clear him if, if we could only get him back. You'd better go to bed, Molly. We can't do anything more till morning. And you? Why, I'll stay up a little while longer. The police said they'd phone if they learned anything more. Mary, you'll call me the minute I hear anything. Who is it? It's me, Mary. Get low. Stay there. I'll come out. Where's Kenny? Where is he? In Detroit. How is he? He'll be all right. The doctor says he'll be fine. He's with a friend of mine in a roadhouse, a little bohemian, Route 21. Mary, you know who puts a finger on this, don't you? Yes. This Kenny. He's in the kind of daze, but when he comes out of it... He's got to use his head. He can clear himself. Get low by going back with I'm him. not going back, Mary. I just stopped by to give you a word. So long, Mary. You can't leave now. You got him ended this, Kitlow. You've got to get him out. And he was my friend. I never meant him no wrong. You never did him any good, either. And now you're running out on him when he needs you most. All right, run away. You don't understand, Mary. He was my friend. Maybe, maybe you'll understand later on. Open up, Lou. Open up. I know you're in the bedroom. I seen the light go out just a minute ago. You forgot, didn't you? You forgot I had a key. You framed us, Lou. But now you're coming with me. We're going to the cops, both of us. You killed Barker, didn't you? Didn't you? Sure, I killed him, Lou. Lou! You're too dumb to live. Pounding on my bedroom door, me behind you all the time. Now, what was that we were going to do? Put down the gun, Lou. We're going to the cops. You're not going anywhere, Gitlow. I'm still on my feet, Lou. I think the last two missed me, Lou. Four out of six at close range. You never was much of a shot, Gitlow. Gitlow! I ain't got a gun, Lou. All I got is my hand. Oh, my God, it's my head! Number, please. Police. The police. Police headquarters. This, this is Gitto. You've been looking for me. Where are you? I ain't got much time. <laughs> Take it down fast. Lou Lentz, he framed the whole thing. I'm here now, his rooms. Except him. Lou's dead. And I'm... I'm... Maybe he ain't such a bad shot. After all... <laughs> Down here, Kenny. Where's well, Getlow still? He'll be back. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you. Anybody else would be flat on his back for days with that arm. Where'd he go? He didn't say. How can I get a lift to Ashbury? This hour of the morning? <laughs> all right, who's the girl? Yeah, it's a girl, all right. Yeah, things like this. I've seen it happen time and again. This woman stuff ends up with a kick in the teeth for everybody. So why don't you get smart? You don't know this girl. And I'm going to her. I'll uh, settle with you as soon as I can. You you tell Gitlow for me. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell him. So long, Estelle. Thank, thanks for everything. Mary. Mary, how did you... I've come to take you back, darling. I want to go back, Mary. But you're free, Kenny. Don't you understand? Free? What about Gitlow? What about Lynch? I didn't think you'd believe me, darling. So I brought the morning paper. Here, Kenny. Gitlow. He's dead. He was your friend, Kenny. You know, it's, it's a long way to Ashbury, but it's a swell day for walking. We're riding, darling. As long as we're together, we'll always be riding. Hiya, handsome. <laughs> How 
our visit to Whistlestop passed all too quickly. And here are the stars who made our stay there long to be remembered. Alan Ladd and Evelyn Keyes. Well, Bill, I'm sorry George Raff couldn't have been with us. He was great in the role. And I'm sure he'd say the same of you. Incidentally, Alan, I understand you've bought a ranch since you were last with us. That's right, about 25 acres out in Hidden Valley. What are you and Sue planning to raise there, Alan? Well, we have a little competition plan. She's going to grow oranges, and I'm going to breed horses. We're going to see who makes out the best. You aren't raising any flowers, Alan? Yes, my wife's raising camellias, and uh, I'm going in for dahlias. Blue dahlias? Uh, that's right, Evelyn. Well, Alan, I saw your new picture, the blue dahlia, at Paramount Studios the other day. It's a thrilling story. I'm looking forward to seeing it when it's released this week. Speaking of flowers, Evelyn, you rate an orchid for your splendid work in Columbia's new picture, Renegades. I enjoyed making it, Bill. And incidentally, a wonderful role for Willard Parker. Also a great performance by Larry Parks. I know from your last picture, Evelyn, that you'll be beautiful in Technicolor. Oh, thank you, Bill. What are you presenting next week at this theater? Next Monday night, we're presenting Hal Wallace's sensational dramatic hit, Love Letters. Released by Paramount and co-starring two outstanding favorites of the screen, Loretta Young and Joseph Cotton. Love Letters is the intriguing story of a profound love played against the background of a sinister mystery, combining the drama and suspense that make it one of the most exciting screenplays of the season. And with Joe and Loretta, it ought to make a great show. Good night, Bill. Good night. Good night. Our thanks for a wonderful performance. <laughs>